live from the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering AWS reInvent 2015. Now your host, John Furrier and Brian Grazley. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here in Las Vegas for Amazon Web Services, AWS reInvent 2015. This is SiliconANGLE's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host Brian Gracely, and our next guest is Sam Blackman, the CEO and co-founder of Elemental. Uh, Elemental Technologies, Elemental? Elemental Technologies is the full Elemental name of the company. Elemental Technologies, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you so much for having me. Congratulations, Amazon uh, announced and has yet to close the acquisition of your company. That's um, correct. Always a great, entrepreneurial high five, you know, there, good luck. Um, oh. Give us a quick update, I mean, I know it's not close, you need to talk about the acquisition, but sure. company status, staying, you're based in Portland, staying in Portland, your relationship with Amazon will be? So, Elemental is going to be run as a wholly owned autonomous organization inside of AWS, which means that I will still be CEO, the entire team will still report up into me, with one exception, legal is now going to report into the Amazon legal team, other than that, it's going to be that's all good. run out of Portland. some money for the legal firm you had before. Oh, they, they that's that exactly out. right. I'm sure you're happy to give that up. <laughs> it is not the one that I would have fought for. If product though, product is something that's Product really stays exactly the same as well. So the beauty of Amazon is that we'll be able to invest significantly more in yeah. all of our products, our on-premise products, which have been very popular, yeah. grown very rapidly over the past couple years, as well as our cloud services. And then of course our hybrid services as well that let you migrate between on-prem and the cloud, which a lot of media workflows so, are starting to do. So Amazon, I was just talking to Jassy earlier today, and I love to talk about the cadence of AWS, right? Always launching new products, but there are very product, technology-focused company, and customer focus. Yes. So I'm sure they were uh, attracted to you for that reason. Talk about your product, technology, and customer focus, some of the quick highlights on the product, some of your customers, and, and why they bought you guys. So um, Elemental builds best-in-class software-defined video solutions. So our first product launched in 2010, Elemental Server, which was the world's fastest file-based VOD transcoder. We finished, followed that in 2011 with Elemental Live, which is our live encoder, can take any live stream, create all the AVR formats necessary to distribute to any type of end device. 2012, we launched a conductor to manage those systems. 2013, we launched Elemental Cloud, which allowed you to run our software in the cloud as a software as a service, as well as um, in hybrid modes from on-premise. 2014, we launched Elemental Delta, which is our content delivery origin system. And you put that all together, and we now have a complete ingest of content, whether it's file-based for VOD or live for live streaming or linear distribution, all the way through yep. origination and delivery. So you guys aren't a prosumer, you're really more high-end professional target customer base? That's exactly right. Elemental's customers are the tier one media entertainment customers, so we power services you may be familiar with like HBO Go and HBO Now, uh, Comcast Xfinity, ESPN, ESPN.com, BT, all the, the BT um, properties, Sky in the UK, Telstra. So we power kind of tier one media entertainment brands for Any ML, MLB? MLB um, is also our customer as well. We Coincidental, they were on the keynote day one. Second year in a row, my favorite demo of all time. Um, yeah. We are very proud of our relationship <laughs> with MLB. So video use case, one of the things we were talking about before you came on was the 49ers have this really cool um, app where after a touchdown, in six seconds, you can get a video replay of that touchdown from every single camera angle. Right. MLB was showing yesterday on stage 3D reverse, you know, for like yeah. potentially replays for referees and the, uh, and the umpires. So that's kind of the use case. People who have the asset, right. like the cube, we have a lot of videos, we cut it up, I'm sure that we could probably um, play with it too, but that's the, the new normal is the video asset is no longer the broadcast. Well, multiple channels, multiple formats. Is that kind of what you're targeting? That's exactly what we're targeting. And the beauty of a software-defined video platform, which is really Elemental's big innovation, when we launched the company in 2006, to capture and process video, you needed to buy very expensive, bespoke appliances that had specialized chips inside them for doing video encoding. Elemental built a software-defined video platform that could do that all in software. So we dramatically reduced the cost of encoding multiple streams of video. So once the cost of that encoding drops significantly, all of a sudden you can do things like have many more camera angles than you did before. Uh, in a stadium like the new Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, all the cameras in that stadium feed into Elemental Video Processing. We do all the distribution to the screens and all the suites. We do all the distribution to the multi-screen devices where that replay that you're talking about is involved. 
And so you have that flexibility and capability with a very small cost. So it's kind of like right once, know the screen size, know the stream, and then it's total blast. It's That's sort of like what VMware did. I mean, VMware made servers into software. You guys are making video elements into software. Exactly. There's, I mean, there's a bunch of changes going on, right? You've got people talking about ESPN getting unbundled, and that could go to mobile devices. You've got AT&T and like, what's really going on? I mean, at the real high level, what's going on in the in the video landscape? How people are consuming it? I mean, is it becoming more mobile? Is it big screens in our houses? What's going on at a big picture? Yeah, you are seeing the consumption trends change dramatically. If you look at millennial viewing trends, they watch much more content on mobile devices and tablets than they do on the big screen television in the living room. So media companies are working very hard to ensure that they can deliver content to whichever device is most convenient for our consumer at a given yeah. time. And that's a significant engineering challenge. So in the past, you have an encoder that could do a single input, deliver a single output. With Elemental, you select very simply which profiles you want to use, and it will deliver content to all the different devices that you want to support. So if you want to hit a Roku, if you want to hit an Apple TV, if you want to hit a PlayStation 3, if you want to hit an iPad, Android, yeah. those are just profiles that you select in Elemental, and we take care of all the heavy lifting of figuring out how to format and package the video so it can be delivered to each of those devices. Are you guys looking at the cloud as an opportunity to go beyond the server clients server endpoint to go much broader. Say for instance, um, we were talking about SiliconANGLE. We could, we're, our challenge is we got content, we want to push it out in all formats. We might, may or may not know the diversity endpoint. Right. If I have a fixed camera location like Stadium, okay that's cool, it's kind of like an on-prem solution. Yes. Is there a bigger vision? Can you share that with us? So, the beauty of the cloud is that once you get your content into the cloud, so once you upload from here, you, you need a camera, you're going to need a camera for a long time to get <laughs> content captured and distributed. Yeah. Once you get that content in the cloud, you can essentially do anything. You can distribute to any type of device, you can very quickly change your parameters, you can dynamically insert ads for each of your different yeah, target customers. I mean, you have such a personalized you know, knowledge of that end user, like how big is the ad play in this thing? It's I think going to be tremendous. We're figuring it out right now. We certainly haven't figured out it to the degree that Google has figured out AdWords, for example, but we do know. But you're a young company. You've only been around since 2006. That's right. So how many employees do you guys had before you got acquired? Uh, we were right around 250. So not at huge at all. So I mean, you, you were probably marching to that, that to solve that problem, and it's still early on, the ad game. Native advertising, whatever they want to call it. Right. Video insertion, I mean, the pre-rolls kill me on the videos. I mean. Pre-rolls, post-roll, it's kind of a desperate, it doesn't have a lot of shelf life, in my opinion. Yeah, and I think that's something that the industry needs to do a better job of targeting and ensure that those advertisements are very, very relevant to the end user. And we're not or, there or yet. Or insertion to the stream itself. Correct, in, yes. in stream insertion, that would be, is that something that you guys do? You know, it's a really interesting <laughs> question, John. So we use GPUs much of the time yeah. to accelerate our video processing, and GPUs have unbelievable graphical manipulation capabilities. So we do have customers that have been pushing us to be able to say, yeah, yeah. you know, take that cup of water and make that a can of Coke or Pepsi it, or what have you. It's one of those you. things where as a startup, now with Amazon, Jassy says the same thing. You, don't, you want to be customer driven, but you also don't want to do a one-off, right? right. You can, that's how startups die. They do one-offs, and Absolutely. then they don't have any kind of scale or leverage. Yes, and so, Elemental is focused very hard on building products at scale and, and launching them at an annual cadence. You know, we are constantly adding to our product line, but if someone wants something that's one off in any way, shape, or form, we have to tell them no. What have you, what's your biggest learning over the past decade? You know, almost 10 years now up on since founding. Obviously you guys have an itch, you've been scratching media business video, video technology, mm -hmm. but the media business has changed radically even just in the past decade. I mean you yeah. had video podcasts, the democratization, consumer generated content, now you got the pros, the distribution formats are changing. What, what is your take on that? What have you, what have you learned and observed? You know, I think a lot of it comes down to going with your gut and betting on trends. So our first major innovation elemental was leveraging GPUs. So other software defined video providers were only using the CPU, which was not fast enough to keep up with all the multi-screen devices that you need to process the video for. And so we thought GPUs had the right architecture to do so. The first two years we were developing the stack, customers were telling us this will never work. You can, if you search the archives, the architect of X264 was saying GPUs do not have the right architecture to do video processing. Well, you know what, we really believed that it could, yeah. and we proved them wrong. Conventional and wisdom, throw it out the window. You, and you got to go with your gut. So the next thing in 2012, <laughs> you know, the cloud was kind of just getting started up. People were saying, broadcast 
broadcasters will never go to the cloud. They won't trust the security of the cloud. Yeah. It's just never going to happen. Why are you investing here? And we were certain that the economics and the scale that AWS brought to the equation with cloud was going to dominate in the long well, term. You stayed the course. I'm sure Amazon was attracted by that, that radical thinking at the time, but that's what Amazon was built on. I mean, Amazon, there was a lot of naysayers. I mean, they stayed the course. Yes. They did their job. They stayed with their gut. They built the building blocks. Well, I mean, you know, Jeff Bezos has a saying, we're willing to be misunderstood. <laughs> and Elemental, I think, has really thrived because we've been willing to be misunderstood. And then all of a sudden, the industry realizes you're right, and boom, yeah. once it moves, it moves hard and fast in technology. What's yeah. it like as an entrepreneur? Because that's a really big thing that a lot of entrepreneurs, they try to go to school for it, but there's, a, there's an art to surfing the, the wave of entrepreneurship where you got to know when to bail, staying on the course. You probably had some moments where you're like, what was, share some personal experience. You know, we've been very fortunate at Elemental. We've had great investors. The team is unbelievable. And I feel like I'm an intellectually curious person. I've been learning every single day at Elemental from people who know so much more than me on whatever functional area they're responsible for. So I think it's really like that, that transition from building the code yourself, which is how the three founders at Elemental, myself, Jesse, and Brian started, to building the code ourselves and you know, having yeah. faith that we knew how to build good code, to switching to, okay, your job now, Sam, is to hire build the company. best people in the world. Yeah, build a company. And give them autonomy and responsibility and let them go help you create this organization. That's a hard transition to make, but if you trust that you can make that and you can trust the people that you hire and that you don't have to have all the answers yourself, that's when the business starts to scale. And in about 2011, 2012, we saw that transition from like, you know, a few early superstars figuring everything out to a real team being developed. That was incredibly gratifying and satisfying and Elemental has been, you know, riding a pretty good wave of success ever since. Having a good product and a great opportunity certainly is, is really key, so congratulations. There's a lot of luck involved well, as well. I don't want to yeah. underplay I, that I aspect. don't believe in luck. I believe you people make their own luck through just good intuition, good, good karma, and just good products, right? I mean. The way I like to describe it is, you have to work your tail off. I mean, that <laughs> is kind of the foundation <laughs> that you have to be. And then you need to have the luck hit, and yeah. if the luck, timing, everything hits on top of an incredibly hardworking, passionate foundation, that's when magic occurs, and yeah. Elemental's kind of been. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, you know, we, we've seen enough patterns now with AWS, they take great technology, they apply it globally, and then what we've seen is we've seen it with IoT, we've seen yeah. it, I think next year we're going to see the keynote, they're going to have a you know, Amazon video. I mean, it's going to be how do we make this stuff easy? You guys have got it, massive footprint. Uh, I think we're going to be seeing him quite a bit next well, year. Well, time to disruption. Amazon has got a platform where they can actually disrupt pretty quickly based upon their footprint. So like, you know, they could, like Mike Dalva was just on theCUBE, they could disrupt an industry in a week if yeah. they really had the right mix. So, you know, again, hard work, Again, yeah, same formula, right? So we totally uh, uh, believe in, in what you're saying. Thanks so much for sharing. Get a lot of energy here on theCUBE. We need the energy. Day three of three days of coverage. This is Silicon Angles, theCUBE. It's still day one. <laughs> it's still day one, Wait a minute, right? Wait, no, it's still day one. It's, no, what inning are we in? It's one, no, first inning. We're still in the first inning of AWS <laughs> on the third day. This is uh, Silicon Angles, theCUBE. And remember, go to siliconangle.tv. We have guests of the week. Uh, podcast dedicated to our guest of the week. I think Andy Jassy will probably win this one. Uh, but also Wednesdays, we have Women Wednesday. The Snowball interview looked pretty damn good. Oh, that was, might win that one. Uh, and also next week will be the Grace Hopper celebration of women in computing and Oracle Open World, IBM Insight, slew of events, City Watching. We'll be back shortly after the short break here in Vegas for Amazon reInvent.